Hello and welcome back. Last lecture was all about building your first machine learning model using MLlib library. But this lecture is all about evaluating your models as well as hyperparameter tuning in machine learning. So without further any ado, let's get into it. Okay, so in the last lecture, we have built our first machine learning model which predicts the price of the Airbnb hotels. So we use the data set which is like a parquet file of Airbnb data where we predicted the price of the room based on the different attributes. But here now once we build our model, there is one important step which is like evaluating the model which we are going to discuss now. So without further ado, video, let's get into it. So now after we build our model, we need to evaluate how well that model will perform. And in Spark, there are like different methods like classification, regression, clustering, ranking, as well as the evaluators. So given that this is like a regression problem that we discussed in the last lecture. So we are going to use a root mean square error, which is also known as RMAC and also the R squared for evaluating our model performance. So the first step would be we need to calculate the RMAC for our model. So RMAC will be like a matrix that will range from zero to infinity and the closer the value it is to the zero, it, which means that it is better and our model is working as expected. So I'm not going to go into any details of mathematical stuff. Let's just evaluate our RMAC with some simple steps. So in this step, we are going to use the regression evaluator method for calculating our RSMA. So in this, we got the prediction column as our prediction as we have calculated in the last lecture. And also we have the label column as the price and we have the metric name which is RSMA. So here we need to call the evaluate method of this regression evaluator and we need to pass our prediction data frame which we have calculated in the last lecture. And after that once we execute this step we got the RSME is a 220.6. So as I already mentioned that the lower the value is the better will it be. So the better our model will perform. So how do we know that this 220.6 value is a good value for RSME? So there are like various way for interpreting this value. So one of this is like building a simple baseline model and also like computing its RSME and just to compare it. So this like a common baseline model for regression task is like computing average value of the label on the training data set. Then we need to predict for every record in the test data set and also compute the resulting RSME. So if you try this, you will notice that our baseline model will have the RSME of around 240. So we beat our baseline. So that means that we beat our baseline. So if we don't beat the baseline, then something probably went wrong in the model building process. Since we beat the baseline RSME score, then we are good to go. So this is how we can evaluate the model. Now let's talk about how we can save and load those machine learning models. So once we build the models, we will save it to persistent storage for reusing that model in the later process or else in the event that our cluster will go down. So we don't have to recompute the model. So saving the model is very similar to writing the data frame. So in that way, we are using like write method and save the data frame to some specified storage solution. So we can optionally provide like override command to override any data contained in the path. So let's jump on to the code now. Okay, so as you can see, we have defined the pipeline path where we want to save our machine learning model. So as you can see, I have given the path here, which is situated in the C drive. And also we need to use the write method and the overwrite method to overwrite that path. And you also call the save and pass that pipeline path here so that our pipeline model will get saved. So if any shutdown happens, so if any, if the server goes down or we need to eventually use that model later, then we can do that using this process. So this is pretty straightforward. I hope you understood this. So when we load your saved models, we need to specify the type of the model we are loading back. So that is, it was like a linear regression model or the logistic regression model. So for this reason, I will recommend you to always put your transformer or the estimator 
into the pipeline so that for all the models we will load the pipeline model and only need to change the file path of that model so as you can see we are importing the pipeline model from the pyspark.ml and we are loading our pipeline model and provided the pipeline path for it and it will get saved in the saved pipeline model so this was all about saving and loading your machine learning model now let's talk about very important process in building the machine learning pipeline which is hyper parameter tuning okay so most of the guys will talk about the tuning their models right you may heard about this so they will often discuss tuning the hyper parameters for improving the model's prediction power so hyper parameter is like a attribute that you define about the model prior to the training right and it is not learned during the training process so you need to explicitly define it before training your model so the number of trees in your random forest is an example of a hyper parameter so that we are going to see in the upcoming topic so in this topic we are going to focus on using the tree based model as an example for hyper parameter tuning procedures but the same concept will apply to other models as well so once we set up the mechanics to do hyper parameter tuning we will discuss different ways for op optimizing your pipeline so let's get started with a brief introduction to the tree based models like the decision trees and we will also discuss like how we can use them in our machine learning model so the first one is the tree based model so as the name suggests tree based models like the decision trees as well as the gradient boosted trees and we also have the random forest are like a relatively simple but very powerful model that are very easy to interpret which means that it is very easy to explain the prediction they should make and hence they will be quite popular for machine learning tasks so we will now first discuss to the decision tree in which we will cover some fundamentals of the decision trees okay so as an off the shelf solution decision trees will be well suited for data mining procedure so they are like fast to build and very highly interpretable and also they will scale invariant which means that standardizing or scaling the numeric features does not change the performance of the tree so what is like decision tree so as given in this figure a decision tree is like a series of if then else statements which is learned from your data for classification or the regression task so as you can see these are like different if and else statements which are bound together as a tree structure so suppose we are trying to build a model for predicting whether or not someone will accept a job offer and the features will comprise like from the salary as well as the commute time as well as the free coffee and etc so if we fit the decision tree to this data set we might get the model which is as given here so we got the salary at least 50k if it is yes or no then it will if it is no then it will decline the offer if it is yes if it is like commute more than 1 hour if it is yes then it will be declined but it is no then it will go to the next if statement if if the company will offer the free coffee if no then they will decline the offer otherwise they will accept it so it is like a series of if else statement which is like a tree like structure so this decision tree is very suitable for this data mining process in machine learning so the node at the top of the tree is called as the root node as you can see here because it is like the first feature that we split on so this feature should give like the most informative split so in this case like if the salary is less than 50k then the majority of the candidates will decline the offer and the decline offer node is known as the leaf node so as you can see this is like a leaf node because there are no other splitting will be coming out of that node like so that it is like the end of our decision tree so how but however if the salary offered is greater than 50k as we discuss we will proceed to the next step and so on so the depth of the decision tree is like the longest path from the root node to any given leaf node so in this figure the depth is 3 so trees that are very deep are prone to overfitting as well as memorizing noise in your training data set but the trees that are too shallow will underfit your data set right 
So with this essence of decision tree which I have explained just now, let's resume the topic of feature preparation for decision trees. So for decision trees, you don't have to worry about like standardizing or scaling your inputs feature because that has no impact on the splits. But you do have to be careful about how you are preparing your categorical features. So tree based methods will naturally handle this categorical variable. And in Spark ML, you just need to pass the categorical columns to the string indexer and the decision tree can take care of the rest. So let's get on to the code and learn about decision trees. So as you can see here, what we are doing here is we are calling the decision tree regressor here and we have passed label column as price. And after that, we need to just filter for just numeric columns and we need to exclude the price which is like our label that we are going to achieve in this step. And after that, we need to combine the output of the string indexer, which we defined above as well as the numeric columns. And after that, we will just combine the stages into the pipeline. So that is the process of implementing the decision tree in our machine learning models. So now we have successfully built the model. So the last thing is like we have to extract the if then else rules, which are learned from the decision trees that we are going to do using these two debug string method from our DT model. So once you print this, we got the decision trees of our machine learning model. So this is like a output of if else statements. And you will notice in this output that it's possible to split on the same feature more than once, but at the different split values. Also, you will notice that the difference between how the decision tree will split on the numeric features versus the categorical features. So for numeric features, if the value is less than or equal to the threshold and for categorical feature, it will check if the value is in that set or not. And also we can also extract the feature importance score from our model to see the most important features. So to do that, this is our next step, like to see what is like the important features in our machine learning model. So if we execute this step, as you can see, we got the importance and the feature, which is like the bedroom as well as the cancellation policy index. Then we got the instant book table index and their importance, which is set in the descending order. So this is how we can implement the decision trees in our machine learning pipeline for doing the hyperparameter tuning of our machine learning model. So this was really fun. So I hope you understood it. We are not going to go into more detail and technicality perspective because this was just like an introductory part for machine learning in Apache Spa. So if you find any difficulties, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also I will be giving this Jupyter notebook in the description below so that you can go through it and try it on your own. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.